video starterous. No? Didn't work? Well, how about we try this? Hi guys, and welcome to Tasha Tuesday, and today I'm doing the Harry Potter tag. I saw my friend Jamie do this video last week, so I'll put that in the description below so you can go check hers out as well. And I loved the idea. I love Harry Potter. I literally came back from a two-day Harry Potter marathon. As you can clearly see, I'm all Harry Potterified up. Let's get started on the tag, shall we? So the first question in the tag is favorite movie out of the eight. My favorite would probably probably be number three. Next question is favorite book. And my favorite book is out of the seven is number seven. I think it's got a nice storyline. I think it concludes things really, really well. The next one is parts of the book or movie that made you cry. Okay, so in the books, I cried in, major spoiler alert by the way, the parts that made me cry in number seven, the book, were was when Harry had the resurrection stone and he got to see his parents again and he got to see Remus and Sirius again. And in the movie, I cried in different spots. I thought I was gonna cry when he saw his parents again and I kind of did, but I mostly cried when Dobby died in the film because I think they did that really, really well. Next one is, if you could hook up with any Harry Potter character, who would it be? Um, I, ever since I can remember, I've always had a crush on Neville Longbottom. He's got a lot of potential that he doesn't see. I would hook up with Neville Longbottom. Favourite character. Okay, so I would like to split this into male and female characters because I can't pick just one. Favourite female character would be Luna Lovegood and my favourite male character, as you can probably guess from the last question, um, Neville Longbottom is my favourite character. Next question is... Out of all the hollows, which would you pick and why? Okay, so this is really obvious to me. I would pick the invisible cloak because you could be invisible and it seems the least dangerous out of the three. Which house are you in? Okay, so despite the Slytherin scarf that I am wearing, it's actually this is actually my sister's who is in Slytherin. I am actually in Ravenclaw, but I don't have any of the merchandise yet. So I will be getting that at the end of the year when I go to Harry Potter World in Florida. Yay. The next question is, what would your Patronus be? My first instinct is to say wolf, so I'm inclined to just kind of stick with that since I don't even have to think about it, it just comes to mind when I think of a Patronus. If you were on the Quidditch team, what position would you play? Firstly, would not be on the Quidditch team. Are you crazy? I'm not a sporty person. I would maybe go to one or two games, like as team spirit, but in the end I would probably be in the library reading a book. To be on the Quidditch team for like a life or death scenario or McGonagall made me. I feel like I would probably be a beta sounds really cool because I am really strong in my upper muscles in my arms and stuff so I feel like I could whack that bludger really hard into the other team. So potentially a beta. Were you happy with the ending? Okay so I am very happy with the ending of the book. I really like how the book ends and I wouldn't have I don't have any complaints. One thing you would change about the film that was in the book but not in the film. Okay, so firstly, I really like the fact that in the movies they showed Neville more. Like in the books, obviously Dobby gives Harry the Gillyweed, Dobby finds the room of requirements. I really like the fact that in the movies Neville finds it. The problem is because they gave him such an assertive role and such a major role in finding things and helping things. They missed out a really important part for me personally was right at the end of the 19 years later They just needed to add that tiny little sentence in the book One of them says I think it's Harry going don't forget to give our love to Professor Longbottom and Then like one of the kids goes oh mum, it's weird. You can't say love to a professor That's it. That's all they needed to say because it shows that Neville became the herbology teacher and and I just if he had such a big role in the movie, why didn't they just add that one tiny minor little line to show that, you know, because throughout the whole film he was this bumbling idiot and they just needed that one little line. A conclusion. What happened to Neville? Ugh. Just one little part. That's it. That's all. That's all it needed. Other than that, it was fine. Just that one little part. And the final question, if you could bring one character back to life, which would it be? I have to think long and hard about this. There are so many characters that I would really want to bring back to life, but I think I would bring Fred back because 
I feel really bad. I know Mrs. Weasley has lots of kids, but I feel really bad for her for losing one, especially a twin. And like, I think it would be really beneficial for Fred and George to get reunited and be back together. And I think it's just the Weasleys. The Weasleys need to be a family again. They need to have all of them, all of the children, all of the twins, both halves. They need to all be loved. Protect the Weasleys at all cost. Simple as that. And that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment below what house you are in. As I said before, I'm in Ravenclaw. I'd be interested to see how many of you are in the same house as me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I post videos every Tuesday. I hope you have a great day. Bye. How do we end it? End is closius, camera obvious. I'm just gonna get up, yep.